This tutorial gives an introduction to moving mesh in COMSOL multiphysics. I will show you how to model the rotation of a circle. So let's get started with the geometry. We will insert a square at the center of the coordinate uh, axis. And we will insert the circle. So to model a moving mesh, you need to go under definitions, right click, and you can either choose moving mesh or deformed geometry. These two are equivalent in most cases. In this tutorial, I will go with the deformed geometry. So since we want a rotating circle, we will choose a rotating domain. Choose the circle and we will define the rotation type to be a constant rotational velocity. So let's enter pi over 2, so that's 90 degrees per second. And as you saw from this video, when the circle rotates, the adjacent mesh elements will deform. So uh, that's the first method that we will use. So we need to insert a deforming domain. This condition allows the adjacent mesh elements to deform accordingly. So that's all for the uh, uh, moving mesh. Let's select a user controlled mesh. We will mesh the entire geometry with triangular elements. So this is the mesh that we have. And now we will answer a time dependent uh, study. We'll choose uh, four seconds for the simulation. So the angular velocity uh, uh, is 90 degrees per second. So in four seconds, the circle will make one complete revolution. Uh, insert the default solver. We will not change much in the settings. Uh, just go to time dependent solver and insert automatic remeshing. So when the circle rotates, the adjacent elements will deform, and after some point, they will become so deformed that the uh, quality of the mesh will go down. So at that point, the solver will stop, it will update the mesh, and then continue solving. So the condition for that is the minimum uh, mesh quality. There are uh, several uh, mesh qualities. If the minimum of any of them goes below this specified value, let's... Um, reduce it to 0 0.1. If the minimum mesh quality goes below 0 0.1 for any element, then the solver will stop, update the mesh, and then continue solving. Change consistent initialization to on. This will make the uh, solution more stable. And uh, that's all. Now we can click on compute. So a convergence plot has been generated. You will see a discontinuity here. So after 40 time steps, the uh, mesh has been updated. And here's another update. So basically, this is where the mesh quality goes below uh, 0 0.1. So you can see as the simulation proceeds, as the circle continues rotating, uh, console will have to update the mesh several times. In the second method that I will show you after this one, this step will not be needed. So the simulation is complete now. Let's view the results. Insert a 2D plot. Under 2D plot, right click and select mesh. So the, this mesh is going to plot the skewness, which is one of the quality measures. And uh, for the data set, select the remeshed solution. Now you can plot it. We will zoom to the circle and you'll see that as the simulation proceeds, the uh, uh, adjacent mesh elements get deformed and you can see from the color that the quality is going down. 
and when the quality becomes very low you can see that the mesh elements are extremely stretched at some point console will stop and then update the mesh so this is the new uh, updated mesh uh, but keep in mind that uh, the circle at this point does not go back to its original or, uh, orientation so uh, you can create a solution copy if you want to and now we will try to implement the next method the next method is a bit uh, more tricky in terms of the geometry basically what we have to do is change this form union into an assembly the difference is with the form union the circle and the square will be bonded together and they will share a common boundary uh, that is the boundary of the circle when you select form an assembly the circle will be placed on top of the square and uh, this boundary the, uh, the boundary of the circle which you can see will be uniquely defined for both the circle and the square so we will have two boundaries for that to work you need to go under geometry boolean operations insert a difference because we don't want the circle to overlap with the square so uh, select the whole object and subtract the circle oh. you will get this geometry and then duplicate the circle this might look the same but the geometry is actually different because right now uh, with the initial geometry the circle was overlapping with the square but now it is not overlapping so we can uh, build the whole uh, geometry and you can see under definitions comsol has uh, generated an identity boundary pair so from here you can see the boundary of the circle uh, it has divided it into four segments labeled from five to eight and then the other boundary that belongs to the square will have a different naming so they sit on top of each other but they are defined differently so when that happens if you go and generate the mesh the mesh will be disconnected right now we can see it is connected but when the uh, circle starts moving it will not cause the deformation of the adjacent mesh elements so you will see that in a moment let's select the rotating domain again we'll keep the same velocity but right now we don't need the deforming domain so disable that and since the adjacent mesh, uh, mesh elements will not be deforming we do not need automatic remeshing so disable that and then we can compute the solution so the solution was very quick because no uh, automatic remeshing was needed now we can change the data set back to study one and we can see the result let's plot a video of it okay, that was good. let's choose all the frames and slow it down a little bit and play so right now you can see the circle is moving with the same speed but the adjacent domains uh, the adjacent uh, mesh elements are not deforming because they are disconnected so if i stop the video and show you a single frame you can see that this mesh node if you look at my cursor is not attached to any other nodes it's disconnected so this is the second method now when choosing which method to use it really depends on the application uh, of course if you do not use automatic remeshing that will make the solution faster but uh, this uh, second method does have its own limitation for example if you are modeling uh, um, if you are using the magnetic fields interface in 3d then this method will not work so this was uh, just an introduction i will be uploading more videos in which the moving mesh will be used in real physics applications Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.